I knew some of the characters make it more than the actors. That's what I was saying. <laughs> uh, I constantly find myself like when I watch anything, I'll be like, my, it would drive my wife crazy, but I'll be like, we'll watch some oh, stupid should... horror movie, and I'll be like, that guy was in burn notice. <laughs> I'm like, it was this episode, he was doing this. And... <laughs> I'm the same way with some stuff. <laughs> uh, you, you should see me every time I am binging a show with everybody. I'm like, one more, one more. We're in the thick of it. <laughs> You're like, no, Cam, tap out. I'm like, well, haven't you seen it already? Yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm continuing. I'm sorry. I gotta do one more. But I did have to slap myself on the wrist one time. I was like, okay, I don't need one more. Just everyone's fading. You know? But see, I only fade away if it's a show that's like well acted, it's artistic and everything, but I have no interest in the story. And, and that can be hard because like Downton Abbey is like one of the few that like cut for that bubble. It's like, see, these guys know how to create a period piece, show the aristocratic lifestyle in the UK back then. And the acting is just so perfect at bringing those characters to life. And then there's some of those others where it's like, it's good for what it is, but... It, not my cup of tea, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, it'd probably be better as a PBS documentary, you know. <laughs> oh. uh, Apple, I think, has it figured out because, uh, as you know, Brandon, they, they bought A24 and they're out, now they're doing all kinds of other experimental stuff. Um, and uh, I think I was talking with Robert Ward on the Legion podcast, Freds, and he was just like, Why are so many people hate the last season of Ted Lasso? I'm like, Ah. I don't know. I guess they're just missing the point. It's got humor, but it's not every minute. You know, it is like Barry, where it's a dramedy. <laughs> it's just interesting, and <laughs> and you never know what movie is going to just kind of irk you, where you're like, "Really? This made everyone lose their shit over this?" Ah. <laughs> okay, there. <laughs> yeah. Boom in the shot. <laughs> Well, you All just right. said that's what I said about Bobby, so there you oh, go. <laughs> uh, well, at least you didn't see Mission Impossible. Uh, that, that was that was very trashy. That was, like, that was a disaster <laughs> movie, uh, Randon, and it just felt like they didn't know what they were making. Are we making Die Hard? Are we making Tom Clancy? Let, let's just rip off Erwin Allen. But stars Tom Cruise's ego instead of The Rocks. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, I, it was the first time I'd seen it with one of my stand-up comedian pals, and he he was try like constantly nudging me, saying, "I'm trying to not riff. I'm trying to not riff." Okay, fuck it, I'm gonna riff. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead. The the sound's pretty isolated here. Okay, well, welcome to the show, all. We're bringing back Brandon Moore. Howdy. <laughs> hey there, podcast fanatic, and occasional guest on here, and. Johnny Boy Mark. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> uh, uh, we either bring you or the other uh, Johnny Bravo in here. The other Johnny. <laughs> uh, so we, we all like laid back kind of programs. And it's always funny when uh, we would kind of go back and forth just talking about different movies and shows and seeing how they landed. <laughs> it was awesome when Brandon was telling me, he's like, yeah, I can't get into this Breaking Bad show. I'm like, see, that's okay. I can't do the last season of Sopranos. It's awful. <laughs> and it's interesting which shows just irk us because it's like, yeah, I, I understand what they're going for, but they, those characters are just so unlikable. <laughs> and don't. And this is before everyone was kind of spoiling every other show on Facebook, whether it was Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. And you're like, I haven't seen the episode yet, but now that I know that, oh, I'm not looking forward to the night. <laughs> well, so we're going for kind of a campier, kind of just laid back, kind of the summer show, if you will. <laughs> not Psych, not Monk, not Dead Zone. No, we're talking about USA Network's other show, Burn Notice. We've covered it before, but we just figured just... Well, one thing we like to do when we revisit these movies and shows, if we're not going to talk about, say, like our favorite gory scenes in like Evil Dead or exciting moments in the Die Hard franchise. Let's talk about like the villains that enforce the narrative of these movies and shows. And yeah, lo and behold, if we're going to revisit Burn Nose, uh, we got to just talk about the various, again, enemies, so to speak. He doesn't call them villains, just 
enemy is just the ones who pretty much made his off the grid lifestyle even harder to fathom. <laughs> so, um, um, before we get into this, uh, Brandon, how did you get into the show? Was it when it was syndicated or when these um, came out? <laughs> so, it was actually Court who told me you need to watch the show, and it was probably halfway through season two that it was on. Um, um, he had already like got me onto Dexter at that point. Um, oh wow! And so, <laughs> Similar show. Um, and so I just started watching this, and I was like, "This is this is a great show" because it just combined like my two favorite shows, which was the A Team and MacGyver, to yes. like put them both together. And I was like, <laughs> and I just was hooked, and I have watched this show. Oh my god, so many times. I, yeah, I've rewatched it over and over. It's the one, one of the one shows that I can. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've seen him often compared to 24 or the equalizer, but yeah, Dexter's an interesting mindset. Same kind of deal. It's like Ray Donovan kind of takes from the same kind of formula, even though that's way grittier, but it's like, okay, who's the big bad this season? And basically who's going to, uh, how's he going to get out of this? <laughs> and yeah, no, that's, uh, I had no idea court from cinema science was a fan, but that's awesome. Cause that, it is kind of wild how he tries to avoid violent situations, but near the end, he's pretty much having to say, well, I guess I'm going to live an illegal lifestyle continually and have to keep thwarting these various guys who are trying to kill me. <laughs> uh, but uh, who'd have thought that Miami's the place to be? <laughs> Nothing good's happening here. Uh, so... Uh, some of these were a total refresher. I had to rewatch some clips. I'm like, oh, 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 that's right. Oh, <laughs> he did do that. And oh my God, that was a wacky storyline. <laughs> uh, there's even just so many one offs, like big bads of the week, where it's like they never show back, but you're like, I wonder what happened to them. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, uh, I guess I'll just in no order, just kind of just circle around, just uh, the ones that are kind of just by season, kind of the main ones to go to. And now keep in mind, uh, 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 the, there, there are plenty of peers who are technically on the opposing side, but they're not, so to speak, his antagonists. They're actually kind of like trying to help him out, like Lauren Stemmel on, uh, you know, Danny, you know, she's technically not the enemy. She's trying to make things, you know, easier for both parties, but she's just like, this is not going to end well. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm going to go with the, the main one who kind of tops it all off, who kind of uh, pretty much is just ruthless, just not going to give him a second chance, going to do the whole kill on site. Now, this was wild for me because I actually had seen season two all the way first and then had to go back to season one to put it all together. Uh, but yeah, let's go with Carla Baxter. <laughs> mm. The one, the only, uh, portrayed by number six herself from Battlestar, uh, Trisha Helfer. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this particular uh, antagonist? <laughs> uh, she's kind of using mind games and then often threatening to kill his mom if he doesn't comply with her demand. <laughs> uh, I would say, like, uh, this was the first time that we see a villain that um, you, you don't realize that they're actually being... It's like the end game of what they want Mike, Michael to, like Michael Weston to be. This is what they, you know... Um, you actually get an insight now for the first time of like, this is what this organization turns people into. Um, you don't realize it, you know, right away. You just think that, oh, she must be like high ranking. But when you really get a spoiler alert to everybody, when you really get into it, though, like she's she's just low hanging fruit, like a lot of these operatives are. Right. And then a gunshot comes out of nowhere in her final appearance. You're like, wait, <laughs> there's someone else from it calling the shots? I thought she was calling the shots. Who killed who? <laughs> <laughs> oh and uh i totally forgot that she employs this uh psychopathic uh sniper uh victor played by uh michael yeah. shanks from stargate <laughs> he's the one who often like is like having to do some hits with 
uh michael weston and then like at the end just like he's like no one is innocent you're like whoa this dude's playing god this is messed up (laughs) how's he gonna get out of this one uh not sure if you guys remember him (laughs) oh yeah uh, oh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, man, it's just, but we're out of the line work. Where do these roaches crawl? <laughs> uh, it's just they, they keep coming out of uh, just the corner, and you're just like, uh, man, Michael, you got to get better at like doing a background check on these guys. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I'll do another one. Um, lo and behold, uh, Philip. <laughs> might know him as the smaller bearded guy who seems to imply that he doesn't really want to be here but management has like enforced him to just kind of just come into the picture <laughs> it's played by richard schiff you guys might know as a scientist ripped in half in jurassic park 2 and toby on the west wing <laughs> you want me to send you guys a list of some of these bad guys oh i i have a lot of them pulled up but i, just, I don't, I don't want to no, take no, up it's all the time. If Jonathan has something he wants to yeah, say, yeah. Whatever, <laughs> sorry. I was trying to remember Philip. Um, he, he, yeah, he didn't do a lot though. That's like, probably he one was... of the ones. I don't think. Yeah, but, but yeah. I just find him interesting because, like, when they first introduced him, you're like, he's the big bad, and then he's kind of just a fall guy, and he's like, oh, please don't kill me, even though I'm making you do all these awful things. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not yeah, I mean, him, you know. yeah, he only like he, he he does some phone calls and stuff, and like does some you know cat and mouse. But like, um, I think his purpose was to like string Michael. I mean, a lot of it string Michael along, but um, I think it's the first time we get to see like he's really high ranking. He is, we know he is, and then he just gets aced. Like, um, and, and then you start. You know, like okay, wow, this is this is way bigger than than <laughs> what we've encountered, um, and I don't know if that's like the producer game where they're like, you know, should we? Because it was season one, so it was like, um, make it unpredictable. Want, yeah, do we want to? <laughs> how do we want to end this? Or um, pull a dick wolf and shock everybody? <laughs> He's not coming back after episode three. Oh, what? But it, it, you're right. It could have been just the Dexter game. Is like, hey, wouldn't it be wacky if you just like jumped off a building? Or <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought he's supposed to save people, not be at the scene of a crime every other day. <laughs> oh, oh. So uh, it's all good. I'm just going through them because it's like they they all vary. But it is kind of wild how half the time like they stand out. I guess because you recognize them as an actor from another hit cable show um here's another one for you we got uh miami pd's uh michelle paxton played by moon bloodgood you guys might know from t4 salvation and falling skies <laughs> uh, she was so hard to read like when she comes in because you don't know if she's going to be like one of the other cia agents who just like wants to capture michael to make her career or if she's crooked and you, you don't know until the end <laughs> but it's like which one's that uh met michelle paxton um, here, let me see. Yeah, she's one of the few that was unpredictable. Yeah. you couldn't quite tell her. In the she would be on her side and not. <laughs> oh, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah she, she was wild too because this is like, it, yeah. At first, she oh, seems her. to be kind of interested by him, and you're like, oh dear, is this turned into a cheesy James Bond <laughs> and then about face? And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh Michael, too. <laughs> Michael, you shouldn't have been so blind. Don't you learn? <laughs> yeah, she. Yeah, she. She's one of these. I like to group her with the type of people who are like the, um, not the, not the baddies of the week, but like the good guy baddies of uh, uh, of the season. Like who uh, who get to play on. You know, they're they're the law, but they get to use legal means to you know fuck with him but she she doesn't realize that she's probably being used like by management that's a good other. point i didn't think of um, that she's because just like, she's just a, she's just yeah. a cop. so like right she's gonna look in her little computer and say okay yep this guy's a bad guy look he just popped up on my list so i'm gonna go after him or whatever <laughs> um 
it, it really goes to show like how far reaching that organization was. That's a good point. It does kind of have a big brothers watching you. And like you say, is like half the time they're just the opposing force, but they're still, he's either going to have to use a career criminal who wants no trouble and is just selling like illegal car parts. But more often than not, he often makes the accident of like stumbling into guys who are like serial killers or selling just ginormous amounts of like nukes. <laughs> You're like, damn. <laughs> Oh man, um, yeah, she and, came up on one of the uh, one of a really good episode with um, uh, I don't know which who the actress was, but it was the guy who uh, the episode where um, that low ranking criminal wants to be he's trying to move up in his gang, and that oh, guy yeah. you know goes around <laughs> bashing all the uh, drug oh, dealers, yeah, um, and they have a really touching moment where he's like, you know, Michael's like, you know, I can get you. He kind of gets him out of the whole game because he's like, you don't need to be in this, you know, and. Um, yeah and it helps that um, Fiona used to work with the IRA but then like left him when she realized hey they're technically terrorists I don't want any associations but she has all that firepower so she I, I lose track of how many times she and Bruce Campbell's character Sam Axe just get him out of these pickles <laughs> like it's too good to be true man this guy is gonna it's like a game of Grand Theft Auto it's like your your record is going up <laughs> The heat is on, baby. You gotta exit stage right. <laughs> yeah, it was the Fearless Leader episode. It had um, Fearless. Uh, Nicholas Tartoro is his name. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's guy. the guy who, yeah, he, yeah, he's the, that's the one. Yeah, he's the very low ranking guy who's trying to make it in. And uh, um, and it's, just, it's just cool to see, like, it's a part of Michael you start seeing where he's like. This guy, he's a bad guy, but then his boss is even worse of a bad guy. But <laughs> technically, that cop is a bad guy, but she's just doing her job. So I don't want to like, I'm going to try and, you know, he does the little, let's let's get these two to meet and then I'll get her <laughs> off my back sort of thing. Right. Good episode. Very good episode. Very sneaky. <laughs> good, good point. Good point. And <laughs> these are hard to to one up <laughs> uh, i guess we can talk about uh yeah. another one uh the one the only uh tom strickler who you might know i think uh ben, ben shinkman who's been i didn't recognize him i got him mixed up with like a bunch of other guys he's done a lot of stuff like hbo's angels in america and the trial of the chicago seven but yeah uh <laughs> Uh, he's the guy who has also has dark shades and a pink uniform and uh, uh he he's pretty much just he's also in deep water he, he's the one working with uh a bunch of other guys uh this o'neill guy who also happens to be an ira, IRA guy <laughs> and, and michael starts turning against him when he finds out oh hold up you're trying to kill my my pal Fiona, that ain't cool. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a he's a big wheeler and dealer, um, definitely. Um and I liked his character. Um he was kind of a dick, but I, I, I do wish he would have stuck around a lot longer than three episodes because uh um, he was comic relief, that's true. <laughs> I didn't think about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was he was definitely plot. Yeah, father, he was but... basically was. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, and the guys he's working for, uh, uh, Paul Blackthorne, you might know him as uh, terrorist Stephen Saunders from 24. And uh, the other uh, CIA guy at the airport is Otto Sanchez, who's been on a bunch of stuff like Oz. <laughs> it's just so wild how these guys, it doesn't matter if they're just one episode, you still kind of remember their face. You're like, I, surely they were on one of these action mystery shows, you know, <laughs> hamming it up. Um, but yeah, he, he's just always calm by a pool, and it's just like, uh, do you have no shame? Of course you don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's just like how, how they describe him as an agent, well, he describes himself as as an agent for spies, like um, he he is kind of a weasel um, in a different way. Like, he, he totally just wants to use Michael, because he's like, I can make some money off this guy, you know? You're right. Um, and, I think he completely underestimates yeah. just how much michael cares which is what so, so a lot of these 
villains are, are are a lot like that. It worked the last twenty times. What's to keep me from turning this guy on his head? <laughs> and of course, they messed with the wrong spy. Um, and then we got MI six agent and Stickler cohort Mason Gilroy. <laughs> you might know this guy, uh, the betrayer Chris Vance from Prison Break. You might also know him from being on the Transporter TV show where he was the main lead on that. It's just so wild how he just shows up. He's like, I'm here to clean things up. <laughs> he's got that giant plane and he's trying to like free a prisoner from there. And he just keeps roping Michael into it. He's like, hey, I need you to be my wingman. And he's like, uh, I don't really want to do this, but you kind of you know, got a gun to my head, so I can't say no. <laughs> oh, and it's just so wild. He reminds me of uh, who's that famous uh, thief who uh, disappeared in real life? Uh, D.B. Cooper, he kind of reminds me of. <laughs> it, it, but if he was an MI6 agent. <laughs> yeah, what's interesting about his character, though, is like, I mean, he was pretty dark for for uh, he, he like, tossed that one Clyde. I think his name was Clyde. I think yeah. name, but his where Michael, you know, sabotaged him, and he's like, "All right, well, I'll just put him down." And towards the end of it, you know, when he finally gets the, you know, he Simon is, you know, breaks out and straps bonds bombs to him. You know, he's like, <laughs> he's really like, "Oh shit, I, yeah. I guess I, fu- I guess I fucked up." Um, sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a very over the top death. <laughs> that was like a speeder's swordfish type death, and you're like, "What?" Obs. <laughs> that was all for it, especially for that. <laughs> it's so wild. I don't think he gets off on killing, but he definitely just seems to just act like everybody's disposable and everybody's a fool, and he's hardy hard, like the smartest guy. And you're like, "Man." It, Someone didn't spank you the right way growing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, when he gets to that airport, you are just like, man, this this guy is even more deadly than the agency. Is like, how, how does he have all these contacts and ways to break in? <laughs> oh. Uh, but what do we think about uh, Sizemore, uh, Weston's former mentor? <laughs> I really like that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, Tim Matheson's been around forever. Yeah. Animal House, West Wing, um, just every other just National Lampoon type movie, often playing an idiot or a douchebag. <laughs> Here he is, just once again, just hamming it up as a villain. <laughs> oh, I, I am constantly. It doesn't make it into a full-on cartoon. It is kind of a cartoon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> It is. It doesn't go full of cartoon like somehow some people would, on some shows. True. It's just interesting. It's just about to me. Amount. <laughs> and yeah, the fact he's not that... like he's not like Governor from Walking Dead. Like, level oh no, of ridiculousness. <laughs> um, yeah, no. He goes so far and he pulls it back again. That's uh, true. <laughs> he doesn't feel like a screenwriter would say. He doesn't feel like a plot device, like some underdeveloped character who's there just to get a cheap reaction out of the audience. <laughs> The governor is a good example. There, there's plenty of other spy crime and horror anthology shows that have some character where you're like, are you just trying to make me want to turn the channel off? What, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, and... he he is a guy that like in, in a lot of shows when I or stories whenever I take an interest in them, like and I want to watch it over and over again. I always find out like I want to find out what happened to this person. He's one. He's one of the few people in this series that get that can give you insight um or is willing to give you insight um about michael and what it used to be like sam doesn't want to talk about it fiona doesn't really want to talk about it it's <laughs> it's very rare that anyone on his side talks mm-hmm. about it but th- he he digs it up and i love the flashbacks when they that you start seeing that um yeah and yeah. the it's... fact that he had some nerve to even like use michael's alias it's like it always made me wonder is that also why he kept coming up extra on the grid like anytime michael's like forged card wouldn't you know like 
work or something is like was he also using an account of his at the same time simultaneously <laughs> this is like because man that, that's just dangerous <laughs> oh but yeah, yeah. it was it was like there was a few times yeah. where he he kind of fell into this like father figure with michael and um and even though for the wrong reasons but Oh yeah, um, uh, yeah. Eventually, it got to the point where oh, yeah. I think I think he caught on, and he's like, um, "Just using more that is." He's like, <laughs> yeah. "Okay, you don't you don't really want to be the old Michael." I've kind of so I'm I'm just going to use you like everybody else uses you. But for a long time there, he 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 really had a hard time like hurting him or like he thought maybe he can change him back or whatever. Right, right. He figured he's a brainwashed marine. I can probably tap into them since i got some military expertise but uh, it's not working <laughs> abandon ship <laughs> he's he was good uh, and of course he works with the one the only arms dealer tyler brennan played by jay carnes from the shield <laughs> that guy the first villain that i felt was actually was when the real threats to michael is right every other movie i see him in he's often a police officer but this is one of the few guest spots i've seen him in where he is just like an unnerving villain where he's just like you don't have to see him stab anyone to know oh he he's very 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 deadly and you need to get out of there now <laughs> oh yeah he he was ruthless um He's got he all was, these offshore accounts, and he's he he's willing to kill everybody. But oh, my daughter! Oh, my lovely daughter, Annabelle. She'll be fine. It's like, well, but you're killing all these other people. But yeah, she's an exception. I think he, <laughs> yeah, I think he learned that. Like that, there's so so. There's only so far you could have pushed Michael, and then when he, you know, um, decided to hurt Nate it was like um uh, how he how he cornered Brennan was like I'm like oh yeah got it got him <laughs> right <laughs> yep. Sam Ags gets to do a bunch of fun uh squaring off with them too <laughs> uh Bruce yeah, Campbell's characters for those not following because <laughs> it's so yeah. funny how Sam will come in here and somehow not blow up anybody but much like his, you know, Ash Williams persona, it's just so just funny to seeing him just come in and just all of a sudden bombs are going off, and you're like, yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking Sam's in town right now. <laughs> oh, so uh, there's plenty of other shady guys. Um, uh, what about the one, the only head behind Drake Technologies? <laughs> John Barrett <laughs> T1000 <laughs> Robert Patrick <laughs> I asked one of the few that I wish was actually on longer than he was yeah he was too short I thought he was going to be the main main, the main main season baddie and he was kind of just more of the sh shadowy guy <laughs> still a standout on season 4 because to be fair at that point um I think we're still trying to get over how Michael's on the run from Von Anderson, the uh, mysterious uh, guy who's, you know, gets Michael out of prison, then asks him to do all these other shady, you know, spy and arms dealing. And you're like, well, who's playing who now again? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, fun fact, uh, Brandon, I was listening to Michael Rosenbaum's uh, uh, podcast, Inside of You, uh, John's heard this episode too. Uh, he was interviewing Robert Patrick, and Patrick actually said that his favorite role to the date is uh, John Doggett from the X Files. <laughs> and his uh, favorite filmmaker to have worked with was uh, James Mangold. But yeah, uh, it's always a so fun book. I think, um, I, I think, sorry. So I think his his character gets overshadowed by this, this point in the series because if you remember, this is this is right when Jesse finds out that he got burned by Michael. And now you have, <laughs> yeah. now you have Jesse. He's the enemy now. And he's like, he's almost like Michael 2.0 in a lot of ways with his talents. And so, and he's even a little bit more reckless, um, especially when he's like, okay, now I'm just, 
I'm going to kill this guy. So I think that's probably why as a villain, he doesn't get as much recognition because this whole time you're like, Oh my God, is, is, is this guy going <laughs> to, is he going to kill Michael or is he going to, you know, be a problem forever or what's going on? Um, well, and plus we got Marv and Justin Walls and all the other like counter yeah. agents. <laughs> so yeah. at this point, yeah. it's like, imagine playing a chess game but then there's like two other sides on the same board. <laughs> Eventually you're going to collide and you're going to want to pretty much win the game by either forfeiting or uh, just getting out quicker. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they are, it, it, it's, it's pretty good at avoiding feeling convoluted, but at the same time, you're like, man, I, I don't know how anyone's going to survive. <laughs> And then Mike's having to keep his younger brother, Nate, uh, you know, safe also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, it, it definitely felt like he was just that Drake was Drake's Drake technologies like it, that. It felt like it was just kind of a bridge just to, like, get somewhere. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it felt like it could have been. um they did that a lot though in, in the series they they'll have these mini arcs and they're like i just to get to the next point the next dramatic thing and then we'll use them throw them away and i guess that's what you can do when you have like the shadow organization there's just going to be another one and another one um right at least nate's son is being raised by uncle mike <laughs> somewhere <laughs> but yeah there's many times where it's like people show up and you're like uh and there must have been a scheduled conflict <laughs> i don't or maybe the writers didn't know what to do with it, so they just ended it. But good point. I totally forgot about how Jesse gets turned and uh, they go back and forth. Just now we're working together. Now I'm gonna hate you again. Now I'm gonna work with you again. Now I'm now I'm definitely mm -hmm. want you dead. <laughs> uh, so much running. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And it just keeps going and going and going. Um, I guess I better throw out uh, Simon. <laughs> He's the main instigator. Oh, God. Yeah. Much like Carla, you keep thinking he's the main, main guy. He's like off the grid. He may not even be working for management, but it's tough to tell because he's a psychopathic liar. So it's like, uh, I can't trust any lie, he says, because when is he not lying? <laughs> He's the one I've always said that that's who Michael could have turned into. If <laughs> have you ever heard of the fan theory yeah, that Russian? Saying. Have you ever heard of the fan theory that Russian crime lawyer uh, Lord uh, Roman might be the same person as Simon? <laughs> Interesting. It Both were played by Garrett Dillahunt. That's the joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is so weird because I recall his Russian guy actually dying. So. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Simon. I mean, you, you don't realize how like important he is to the story till you find out that it was it was his it was his um, actions that got put onto Michael, which got him burned. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which mm -hmm. it always made me wonder. Like, I mean, I guess I guess it's possible you can fudge details and stuff like that, but like. Michael had been in the military and the CIA for years and years. You would think, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just because government is just like, hey, we got the notice. That's it. We got to follow through. It's not like, I was just very surprised that there's not like all these people who work with him and like, that doesn't sound <laughs> like Michael at all. That's very, that's very escalated. A, a bus full of, of people. It just kind of, um, it's not a deep show in that respect, but yeah. it does kind of just kind of just unofficially just state hey these guys are tools even if we know you we're going to treat everyone as an enemy just the minute you get a red flag on your profile you know you, uh, and even if it's just something ridiculous like shoot on sight and it's kind of just in a way it pretty much just says don't trust the cia and it's just so weird though because this one at times even makes me feel like they're tr acting more like the nsa where it's not just the if you're captured, we disown you, or you have to find a way to escape because your cover's blown. They're pretty much like, well, we're going to send assassins to silence you because you're a threat to us now. And it's like, really? So much for all this government spending. Jeez. Uh, 
understand. He was he was a good villain. Though. I mean, he was so, sometimes he was over the top, but I think that was probably uh, maybe it was intentional because you know he, he's like the reverse Michael. He actually enjoyed his life of being this ultra terrorist who was yeah. really a bad guy, yeah. and he was actually he's like pissed that he lost right. his life and he would want that back. Um, and I, I just remember when they met in you know in that electronic store or whatever, and he was like good you can have your life back i want to give it to you or whatever um and that really heartfelt moment whenever he does catch him and uh he um he he comes in later and uh he's <laughs> talking with um his mom mm-hmm. and he's like um he's in tears you know you don't see weston cry a lot on screen but he was like he you know he said i just be i would be just like him it would be a matter of time before i'm just like him and that's yeah. where you start to realize like um he's is Michael just like him? Because, you know, you, you have all these hints along the way, like Sizemore says, as he was just like that. He was worse than that, actually. But people just yeah, because he's already, yeah. Michael's already afraid of becoming like his mentor. Uh, and so to have Simon be using similar tactics like him just just makes him even more insecure at times. And you can't, it, it helps for the drama on the action sh- side of things, too. And it is... Simon, in a way, almost kind of makes me, reminds me of like an ISIS kind of t- terrorist. You know, the, the management created him and then they pretty much disowned him when he went too far. And so then it's like, well, uh, he, but see, the, the difference is he's able to kind of always just like get out of trouble and like be a chameleon. And somehow he does it, even though he's like a wanted man, he's not as wanted as Michael, who's like, you know, uh, it just shows you how the agency is kind of all worried about appearances versus going after a high riskier ty- uh, target. <laughs> oh, but yeah, Simon is freaky, and that is true. It it, it just is a good counter villain for Michael because you know w- when this guy is just constantly just uh, goofing up at every angle of your plan, you know it's just. It's just very overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of story that hinges on him. I mean, he was used to because he helped Michael for a little while um, to help him break down the organization. He's the one who actually led to him getting the list that would help bring down everything, which is why Drake, you know, wanted to intercept him. But then at the <laughs> point whenever he was found mm-hmm. to be like the A team um, on, you know, the, yeah. Uh, at, in, the, in season seven and he finds <laughs> michael finds out that his handler has hired him he's like that's where it really started breaking he's like why am i doing this if they're willing to use these type of people to get the job done um and i'm with them then where's the line and uh right um yeah well, and this is before he goes after the main main big bad uh anson played by jerry burns of uh, max headroom and uh, justified fame you know it's like oh by the way michael i did kill your dad who was a spy like you and you're like oh, really dude really oh man yeah but- anson anson was really yeah. that was a really good intro like they got him into the series really good like i didn't i didn't see that coming <laughs> i hate you already man and uh simon's oh. messing with us all these <laughs> other guys are messing with you fiona and sam are not sure if they want to continue with the team and Mike's still got to keep his mom safe. <laughs> oh. And part of it, I fell for it because it was like, I still remember him from Justified. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he was this, he was just kind of this weasel of a, of a, of a villain there. So it was like, so seeing him as like this weakling psychologist, I'm like, oh, that's, that tracks, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and flipped it on us. But yeah, it was like I don't think we they'd have more it. that on this show. Wouldn't have it any other way. It is like he, if there's any reason to just dislike him immediately and just root for his come up and say that's that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, when oh. he when he, he it, it does transition though to one of like you know, it, it's a villain throughout the series, but you never get to learn much, and that isn't Michael's dad, like he he gives you the insight of like what his dad is actually like and um i mean you kind of get the idea you know because he's you know he's an abusive alcoholic and all this stuff and um, yeah. yeah it's it's totally fucked up how he plays on 
Michael's past like that and how he could get so close to him and um yeah <laughs> all these guys man <laughs> yeah it didn't feel like like when they had that one guy where in like beginning of season five where they're like we got them all tracked down and that one guy he's the last guy ever and he shot himself or whatever and then he's <laughs> like why did he do that i don't know and then it didn't feel like that type of a guy where it's like no you know we're well, we almost got them all, but here's this guy. This guy actually kind of made sense. He, he, you know, he had a really good backstory, and it, it, he was just really, really interesting. Yeah, and it, it, and, and that is true. He didn't feel like just a one-off. Like, hey, at the end of this conversation, he's going to be dead. You know, it's like, no, he's going to be brooding in the background, and the hero is going to have to take uh, five to seven more episodes figuring out uh just what went wrong and how he can get out of this pickle <laughs> especially without letting the emotion get to him <laughs> and there's so many other people who you don't expect him to just like turn on a miter <laughs> uh i meant to also bring up i guess uh some of the other uh terrorist organization that he takes down in uh season seven <laughs> Uh, you might remember, uh, I think it was, uh, no, nah, that's not it. Um, yeah, okay, so it was Sonia, and then there was uh, uh, J James Kendrick, and they're this Latin America terrorist group. <laughs> and pretty much that they're, they're the ones in the final season who Michael has to take down in order to get immunity by management. <laughs> It's just so yeah. wild how they too have been pretty much playing all the other thieves yeah. and CIA guys for a full too. So it's like, man, however this ends, someone's gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a perfect organization how they all because you they they are terrorists and they go above the law to get things done, but they also do it in a way that um because the whole thing was born out of James Kendrick having um, to do these missions that were like really underhanded and like this is not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be killing innocent people, or whatever. And he creates he's he's like the unofficial organization yes. of what of like what <laughs> burned Michael in the first place. But these guys are trying to do that same thing, um, and it, it is really wild where they blur the lines between like you know you, for a while though you think. You know, is is Michael really going to go into this? Is he going to? Is this where he's going to, um, uh, you know, fall in line with this? And it, this, this was not. I mean, internet has been around obviously, but it wasn't during the, the when this was going on, like on the air. There wasn't a lot of. You didn't get like a lot of spoilers of like so-and-so says he doesn't agree for the next season. So we know this is the last one because the, <laughs> we know this actor and this actor won't during that time you're like this they might still keep going i don't know, you know <laughs> will, will they renew it i don't know but you don't know until <laughs> you get there <laughs> um he, he yeah james kendrick was sonia was kind of like i mean she was like an um like a negative version of uh uh fiona in a way um you know i think she was used as a as a tool in that in the storyline for that um yeah a little bit james kendrick though like I, that 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 villain was i really loved how he was he was compassion he was this weird like compassionate dude but yeah. also like i got a job to do but yeah i'm here for you man yeah P peter ferguson has made a living just playing tough to read guys and yeah. You don't know if they're loyal or villainous until pretty much the final frame. He's been on everything from Briscoe County and Battlestar to there's a Bruce Campbell connection, uh, as well as Flash. Uh, train on the track. Train on the track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and and it's it almost it's wild how they're in Latin America. It almost kind of brings degrees to me of kind of like the Bay of Pigs, how the CIA has made a living just goofing up other countries that they fear are going to be more powerful than the United States. And 
these guys are pretty much doing spy method on ethical activities, but then doing it for other revolutionary stuff for their own cause. And you're like, man, so everybody's lines are blurred. Like you say, it's like, well, uh, I just hope Michael survives this. <laughs> Cause uh, that they all have passion and all these awful things they're doing. So I can't call them just mindless terrorists, but at the same time, they're still terrorists. <laughs> Well, so I would be amiss if I did not mention uh, uh, Thief, uh, an ex-spy, uh, Rebecca Lang, played by the TX from T-Free herself, Christina Logan. <laughs> it's just so wild how this is like she and Michael are trying to steal some stuff, and then she's like, I got a different plan. <laughs> Holds him at gunpoint, and you're like, what? What? <laughs> Oh, but oh, yeah, yeah. The show, and this is where I had to catch up on the show at that point. I was um, like, she's been some awesome star power now. <laughs> and uh, once again, another person who has like bombs on her at all times. <laughs> uh, she was, um, she was one of those people, like, I, if I remember, I think she was in the CIA, I think she was actually, yeah. I think she was still active uh, until until basically she had to pull the trigger and be like, you know, or she, her brother dies or whatever. Yeah, um, she had a brother named Trent. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a deceiver. <laughs> all, all these people are very unexpected. You never really know, uh, like, even what the greater scheme is. Like, it's more than just hey, you know, I got this agenda, I got this, I'm doing a revenge on that and everything. It's like, that. they got all kinds of things that uh, you don't, uh, like, to even predict it would be pointless. You know it's going to be just something out of left field. <laughs> Along for the ride. Um, I guess I could mention uh, the Comandante uh, Veracruz from the Sam X prequel movie <laughs> played by Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal. <laughs> Hold on, up real quick, I, I've only seen the, that movie just a couple. Yeah, it's still on Hulu. Hundred times. Want to watch it? But yeah, a couple hundred times. Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he he was a good villain. I mean, he he was star power. I think at this point, because I think uh, I think he was didn't was he. He wasn't on Narcos yet, but he was getting there. He was, was pretty he much. On, has he? Did he do his Game of Thrones episode yet? Wasn't he on there? Uh, was he? Um, I, th I think that was two years later, but he oh, was okay. definitely. I think like many investors, they knew he was on the rise. He was big, okay. doing plays and everything, and then guest starring on every other New York based TV show. And so they're like, "Yeah, we got, we got to get him." <laughs> Uh, it was so funny when I looked up his resume, you know, as soon as his star, you know, at his third or fourth, shall we say even fifth, you know, stage of his career, you know, because after Game of Thrones, he did Graceland, Narcos, and then Mondo. And then I was like, okay, I think I understand why he's big now. <laughs> and, but when I saw that on his resume, I instantly like put two and two together. I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> So that's just how empowering he was in that. I mean, he's not even the main villain, but it's just so funny seeing him be a commando type, you know, big bad that you'd see in probably an 80s movie. <laughs> yeah, his, his character. Oh, I realize that's so much they don't want over the years. Well, when I. What I will say though is uh, about Pedro Pascal's character there. I mean, I think he kind of suffers from the Drake technology um, <laughs> level stuff because he, he was a good villain and he was a you know, he did remind me a lot of like if you watched a lot of MacGyver, a lot of A Team, the, the throwaway <laughs> military guy. Um, but unfortunately, the real villain of that episode was the 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 Navy admiral who is oh yeah you know pinching Sam Axe to get into this mess. Um, and you just want to hate that guy because you're like, this guy is a hero, you know, and, and, and yeah. all because he slept with your wife, whatever, you know, <laughs> takes two. Um, <laughs> your, your wife also found somebody, you know, so it's not just him, but right. Um, and he's and he's a warmonger, so you're like, uh, that's not who I think we should be supporting, but 
he is yeah he's roped sam into doing this thing for him and you're like good lord <laughs> i hope he can survive this and put this guy on trial <laughs> oh yeah it's it's insane <laughs> But I, I liked a lot of the Burn Notice villains, though, that I liked the most were the ones who were like, they started out as a villain, and then they, whether or not they wanted to or not, they became assets of Michael. Like, I like Sugar, I like <laughs> Carmelo Dante. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> all, all these um, individuals who um, he, he just finds a way to, to make them, like, have to work for him. Um I so forgot about Sugar. He, he is insane. <laughs> a tape makes you smart. We'll return after these messages. The Jacked Up Review Show podcast is honored to be part of the Blind Knowledge Podcast Network. Join anytime, talk the talk, and enjoy yourselves. There's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy, you got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates. Most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in, it's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always am I the winner. (laughs) Yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. So I was just thinking we could talk about John C. McGinley's character, uh, Tom Card, his sniper pal, and uh, Sanja Sean from The Wires, CIA gal. Thank God for Wiccas, because like you say, you tend to forget who half the villains are on every other SVU Dexter type show. <laughs> Just what did they do again? Oh, that's right. They did that unforgivable thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like those people who can make these wiki fandom things, they're the best. Like <laughs> I-, I love it too when it's like it's even more comedic. Like I saw someone who had labeled Mike Nelson from Mystery Science Theater and a Farscape character as a war criminal. I'm like, well. To be fair, they did accidentally blow up a planet. <laughs> I guess that counts. Well, I guess in order of, I guess, how it goes down, I mean, I think Tyler Gray's the, I think that's the first person they meet, um, or it might be, I can't remember, anywhere. it's either Olivia or it's Tyler Gray, one of the two. But... They they kind of go back and forth, but they're all ironic. Coincidentally, they're, they're really connected, too, where it's just like, whoa. And they uh, like so basically you know at first uh tyler's we think is going to be the main main guy going after him but he answers to again tom john c mcginley's character who's you know weston's former mentor and then weston you know does the unthinkable and actually has to cross the line and uh uh but yeah he just decides you know what I'm on my vengeance. I'm going to go out and just kill Tom. I have nothing to lose now. And then Olivia, of course, we think, oh, she's a goody goody two shoes. And it's like, wrong again. She's another crooked CIA goon. <laughs> now, Tyler, <clears throat> Tyler Gray, though, I mean, his story starts like with one of the most heart wrenching like parts in the entire show where because Nate Weston dies and he's the one who shot him. But you yeah. don't know that when it happens. You just, you know, they go through all this, you know, kind of. They do the. Truth. Typical camera trickery where you see a sniper crosshair and you're like, wait, yeah. who is that? <laughs> and then he's just gone. There's just a giant hole in him in the side. And then it's like, oh, wow, that is really, you know, I wasn't expecting it at all. Like, yeah, um, when that came out, like, I think 
because of the internet i think there was some rumors that someone's gonna die on the show but i didn't look at that stuff so i had no idea that was coming when i was watching it it's like oh my oh, god absolutely much like chuck and even macgyver is like the show is so campy that you for, that when it does actually get emotional you never expect it <laughs> yeah it, it hits you hard and and at that point i was like oh my god dang that was so i, I get and it led to a lot of good scenes like that scene where he's with um michael's mom with with madeline and she's yeah, like yeah. she wants to confront him and and you could tell like, i mean this is after obviously they've learned that he's been under the thumb of tom card and you know he's being used like michael's being used and then you you actually see that this guy is not he's not really a bad guy he's just doing his work and he thought that he was doing good work because Tom Card said it was good work. Right. And, he was brainwashed and thinking, oh, Michael's a terrorist, kill his family. Oh, yeah. He's not and, a terrorist. He's just a guy we don't like. <laughs> and Madeline, you know, you know, next time you know their name before you pull that trigger and slaps them across the face. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, that, that 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 felt rewarding. And kudos to Kenny Johnson, who again has been on Sons of Anarchy, The Shield. Uh, I think the reason he plays this so well is he's used to pl playing characters who are just hard to define. It's like they're technically on the bad side, but they're not meaning anything wrong. And uh, so therefore you give a little suspense. Is he going to redeem himself in some capacity? And uh, yeah, uh, seeing him react to how brainwashed he's become is uh, very good acting. Yep. And uh, with Sansa Sean, uh, were, were you already had you already seen HBO's The Wire? No, I haven't actually. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Uh, I just found it interesting how she's another one of those New York, LA character actors who's just like she can do a serious thing or a campy show. She's done plenty of other stuff too, like Scorsese movies and uh, Two Thousand Shaft, and she's the she's Burnham's uh, a strained mother, time traveling mother on Star Trek Discovery. But yeah. Uh, I think she did well in here because you just think, oh, she's goody goody two shoes. And it's like, nope, just like Tom, she's been compromised and she's just using his death as an excuse to do her own get rich quick scheme. <laughs> yeah. And they do a good job of, uh, I mean, they lay it on pretty That standoff on the boat. <laughs> in, in the beginning, they're <laughs> yeah. like, you know, they're like, she's a counterintelligence agent and she knows all these tricks. So you got to be careful. And, and then they know that Sam's with her. And, um, she is really good and I'm like oh man this is serious business and she's really like she turns it to 11 and then yeah. you know I just thought you know she's just being a fucking cop being a cop she's you know being really at, you know she really wants to close this but you know as we find out it's actually more than that she has she's betrayed her country and and for money or whatever and so no that, yeah. that, that's true i uh, and just when she's facing off with him on the boat, uh, I just like how she, instead of just taking it up to over the top acting in Eleven, she just pretty much is like, did you seriously think you knew us? <laughs> You're a CIA ga guy and I got you screwed. <laughs> I got you dead to rights. <laughs> it was a cool episode because it, it really, it was one of those episodes where she gets caught when she finally gets busted by Michael. It's one of those episodes where he uh, he goes into that little kind of monologue where he's like, he, I like it when he teaches you a little some things like it lets you behind think, the curtain. Uh, yeah, people think she, <laughs> people think the Coast Guard is like the Navy's little sister, and uh, you know they're not really all that strong, but they actually are a branch of the military. They have battleships. They have you know, mm -hmm. and he shows you know what they can do, and you know lures are into basically a trap, and he's like, "I'm ready to die. Are you? All right." And he just turns off the radio, <laughs> full speed ahead. I was like, yes, "That's awesome." <laughs> Yeah, very unexpected. You're just like, <clears throat> oh, we're going to do this. Okay. <laughs> Man. Uh, but it, it was eye-opening. Uh, and I guess that kind of just leads us to just some other just one-off characters, because there's a bunch of them out there. <laughs> and there were plenty of them, like especially Mark Shepard and you might know from Supernatural. Uh, Carlos Bernard played a ex-con in one. You might know him as Tony Almeida from 24. Uh, I think it was around season three or four, and nah, probably three. And he he had Fiona's trust, and Fiona was, of course, just doing an undercover op for him. He's like, no, no, I can't do this. I can't go back to jail. And uh, it was interesting how oh, he played Gilroy. Okay, I was trying to yeah, yeah, 
the yeah, name to the face. It's, okay. It's been a minute. Yeah. I know. <laughs> It was interesting how is like a lot of these one-off characters, they really could go anywhere. <laughs> uh, but I, I applaud him for for wanting to do something like that because uh, it just it, it kind of kept the show a little uh, stronger by just showing, hey, not all these guys are just stupid foreign agents with a bunch of guns and ready to die. <laughs> Some of them actually want to do good and others are just criminals by career, but not by choice, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, if anything, uh, how would you, uh, if you were to introduce this to someone, you know, obviously it's still on Hulu and you can probably buy it from just about anywhere else. Uh, uh, how would you introduce them to this? <laughs> I guess it would have to be. I'd have to know the age group that I'm talking to because if they <laughs> if they're kind of my age, I would definitely point out that it feels a lot like MacGyver and A Team and that kind of uh, you know, that crossover of where the it has this elite group of people who always have to come up with unique ways of solving problems, um, and but if it, if it's just anybody, I would say you know if you like, I mean if you like dramas and you like action i mean you're gonna love this show it's just you can't beat the jeffrey donovan is such an amazing actor and bruce campbell is right there with them and it's it's insane the energy awesome. those two brains same thing that gabriel amwar you know yeah. she's one of those other gals who's just been in everything and again. oh and um yeah um who, who plays madeline sharon um what's her name oh yeah yeah madeline? uh sharon uh, sharon glass from Kagan yeah. and lacy yeah and I liked how they snuck in her Cagney and Lacey co-star Tyne Daly as a bank receptionist in one episode. I was like, there you go. No one except people who watch 80s shows are going to get that. <laughs> oh, but... I mean, USA Network, though, I mean, they 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 pump out good stuff. I know they, they get kind of flat because they're like this, you know, second-rate cable company or whatever, but they put out good content, so they they come a long yeah. way from campy periods. Up all night, <laughs> yeah, up all night. <laughs> silk stockings. Uh, I was surprised they never did a crossover with Munker, uh, Psych. But I mean, yeah, after they did TV show, short lived TV show spinoffs of both their Purge and Born Identity sagas, I think Universe is going to keep twisting the knob a little more, keep experimenting because they they've done some other ambitious ones and mini series that are criminally forgotten as sometimes the ratings don't always work. Um, my sister actually joked for a while that suits or white collar could have crossed over with burn notice. You know? Yeah. It, it yeah. was, they, it was kind of that whole thing, pick a equalizer kind of formula. Someone's on the run and just action. <laughs> like go, go haywire, go ape shit. Yeah, I think what also made his sh that show like blow up is like before that came out, I mean, you basically had a sea of um, law and orders, right? Uh, procedurals of just cops this, cops that, and you know that I'm not bagging on the Shield or like NYPD Blue or any N NCIS. You know, for all a those while we had to do what TNT and yeah, it, all that's kind of just all you had. And it's like, can we yeah. get something that? isn't just cops like i know he's kind of like he's he's not a cop a spy is not a cop but he worked for the government but he you know in his story he had right. to basically be the good guy but was treated like the bad guy and absolutely was it and, was at the perfect time the closer was actually daring to do something different than most cop shows but i i applaud for notice for trying to do not only something different with a spy formula but show how the world is kind of gray in its whole uh, timeline while also reminding you to have fun because for a while it seemed like hey let's have another shocking show like the sopranos and it's like yeah but we're just distracted by how cool the gore is and the plot's really <laughs> it'll get better uh, but i mean yeah anytime donovan shows up in a project whether it's the true crime film by clint eastwood uh changeling or uh some other dick wolf tom fontana production or I mean, he had a similar show like this that was kind of like falling down in Dexter called, called Shut Eye. Yeah, I remember that. 
All right. <laughs> I promise we'll do a special on it. And it, it was interesting too, how it's like, I saw how he was, he made the list of highest paid TV actors. Kevin Costner was making like 30 million an episode of Yellowstone. So that tells me everyone else is getting shit like 50 to 400 an episode. Not, not very, I can't say I'm cool with that kind of treatment but whatever um but i I saw that he made he was starting to make like 10 10 million an episode so i was like okay i I, I mean i'm sorry but jeffrey donovan i'm gonna have to say it is a better actor than kevin costner yeah i'm I'm just gonna say it he just is (laughs) well and that's the problem too is like i think yellowstone was already gonna make money because it was just a twisted mixture of western and gangster shows but It was wild how they betted on an actor who's pretty much been in the same zone <laughs> all his career. Romantic lead, baseball lead, cowboy. Okay. And he's yeah. none of these things. What? <laughs> in this? Well, uh, 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 I, I don't know. I, it would be interesting if they did a documentary on talent managers. How did you slap some sense into your celebrity on hey you should take more acting lessons now that your looks have dried up hey how about you do this kind of show because no one takes you seriously as that anymore <laughs> but i wish the more would do, i wish more of them of those actors um instead of trying to act like they're washed up pull the martin the martin short route and then you know you go, go find your friend steve martin and go make a new tv show that's there awesome. you go you know, like, <laughs> you know that has Something. no it doesn't matter about their age they can put it into their into the storyline and it's funny so right and how ironic that to tie in with that show they have a podcast recapping every episode of only murders in the building i'm like oh now that's even more meta because it's about true crime podcasters (laughs) that is the one thing that if i had i wish burn notice actually probably would have released like 10 years later right it it would have landed right in the podcast era and and i would have loved to hear all those guys i mean you can I have listened to some of the commentary and it's, it's fun, but commentary is not the same as a podcast. We can get them all in the same room talking and bullshit. You might be able to convince them to do it soon. I know, um, uh, Brie Castellini, who is a, I had on for outlander. She had her burn notice, uh, podcast recap, but she was getting annoyed because some people on Twitter were just bad mouthing her. And it's like, well, we're analyzing every part of this. We like the show, but we're going to point out a plot hole. <laughs> it, it is interesting how everyone differentiates and reacts to everything differently. Uh, some recap podcasts have been really helpful at helping me like prepare for an inevitable rewatch. And other ones have been like, like there was one that was, there was like three different ones recapping criminal minds, but like they were nitpicking so much where I'm like, good Lord, do you even like the show? <laughs> yeah. And I mean like, um, not, not like necessarily like, uh, like, you core like that that level of podcast i mean like the actors themselves are part of like like right. always sunny has a podcast like and it's the them. scrubs one yeah that those are the ones I, I would really be interested in listening to not that i i could definitely listen to a burn nose podcast but sure uh, <laughs> yeah and yeah but as far as the villains though like that i i really I, going back to tyler gray i i liked how they tracked him down. I like how they they went through the whole process of trying to like get into that security firm to see who he was and and manipulate that low level you know agent type of agent of agents guy or whatever who's I don't know his name was working in that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They just give him you know they make him think that he's you know that they're that they're part of a rival security firm or something and trick him into giving up the information, but. Um, plus that was, that was one of the, that was kind of, I guess, no, that wasn't, they, they had already went off to other, well, I don't know if they went to other countries, but they, you know. Yeah, they, they kind of was in, other in season four, yeah. but I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they went on site to, you know, Puerto Rico or wherever they went, um, to go, I, uh. I mean, Sam Axe kind of implies a bit of that in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it it's eye-opening too because you're just like yeah where did a- around the way did these guys get disillusioned with their career build you know yeah uh but it's eye-opening yeah and i think that's 
I think that's what starts. Yeah, I think that's uh, when 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 it's Tyler. You don't know it's him yet, but when he kills Nate, and then they're tracking down the dragon. I think it's I think it's the dragon of sniper rifle. I think is I think that's that whole storyline. And they I think they go yeah. to Seymour, and they're and he's a riot. Seymour's Seymour's kind of like a. He's not an enemy, but there are times in the series where he's like. No, you're. He's about to go off the edge. Yeah, he's not he's very like, stable. He, yeah, he, he he might as well be an enemy for some of the things he gets Michael and Fiona into. But he he's fucking hilarious. Uh, I remember watching that guy on Grimm. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how uh, I I know they're doing that with Grimm as well, where they're recapping every episode with the cast. But I still got to catch up on that. Uh, but. It's it is eye opening to me now that they have uh so many shows that are pretty much they're at the fifth or sixth stage of being embraced by an audience now. <laughs> been off the air, they haven't really been syndicated, but they're there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, and I, you know, everything else from RoboCop and Star Trek to. Uh, Planet of the Apes and Evil Dead is getting a comic book. Uh, would you like to see a Bruno's comic book continuation since Donovan updated about a year ago that Fox was interested in moving forward with a movie idea? So, I think it'd be awesome. I mean, I I think it'd make a great I think it'd make a great uh, a comic. Um, I would love to see. I mean, I I know some of those shows like turn into like. Like Warehouse Thirteen, for example, like they oh, there you go. like that, like that, <laughs> that had its series and then it had an animated thing. Um, that would work for a little while. So, like, I, I would totally watch that too. Um, like an adult kind of more, um, not campy like Archer, but you know, like yeah, that, but like close actually, <laughs> you know, similar thing. But you know, I know it all costs money, and you never know they they're taking the risk. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly how the executives are talking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We don't think it'll make money, even uh, though it lasted a while. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up-